So how about those takedowns? You think that made the difference tonight? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I went to um, uh, shout out to Matt Hughes. He was one of my biggest uh, heroes in the uh, um, UFC, and I did a whole old school Matt Hughes, and it felt good to do that to pick someone up, walk. And I was looking for my corner. I was like, "Where you at?" They're like, "Over here, over here," and slam him. So that felt good. I didn't do that in years. So it was awesome. So. What are you guys working on uh, just now? Um, Jorge Rivera, uh, UFC, I've had, uh, in my eyes, uh, one of the legends, especially out of the Boston. Um, he, he's one of my new coaches now, and uh, he was just telling me that technique I should have did. And um, even though I got get the victory, I'm happy for the dominant victory. I just lost if I work on. I feel I should have finished my opponent. So it's a loss if I work on because I'm, I'm coming for that title for sure. You had a submission going, but he seemed to get out of it. How did you uh, feel about that as soon as he was able to get away? How much? Um, he was smart because I, I, um, I seen he was like resting and he was trying to ground the pound me. And what he did is when he rested his, uh, I believe his right arm over, I, I looked, looped over and grabbed his head with my legs. But as soon as he, he knew he was in trouble, he just he just stood up and getting away. I was like, oh okay. But I mean, he's smart, of good fight. But you know, I'm real proud of myself being a striker. He is a glory a fighter, a really top tier uh, K1 striker. You know, and coming from Y Crew um, School of Boston, one of the best Muay Thai school in Boston. You know, we just proved that we can hang with glory guys, K1 guys. Doesn't matter. You know, I'm an MMA fighter. You know, um, beating up glory guys, I feel good. How does it feel to be back here? This is your second stint now with the UFC. I didn't get to talk to you in Boston, yeah. so I'm curious how that feeling is for you, having that win over Hall and now this over Sire. Um, it feels good. I, I I believe for years I belong here. You know, I had a little um a little bad luck. You know, with three losses in a row, but I'm, I'm trying to prove that I belong here. And I hope with this dominant performance that I could prove that you know I, I belong in the UFC. And I'm, I'm top tier in Cherry, and I proved to the UFC not only I can fight in 185, now I can be dominant in 170. Well, that's what I was going to say. We actually talked about that in Boston. And, you know, you were definitely the underdog there and came in and had a lot to prove. So do you feel that, you know, well, actually, what did they say to you after that win? And, you know, this is a, not a relatively fast turnaround, but a good turnaround for you to get another fight in before the end of the year. Um, well, they said the win is the one fight 85. What happens, me and my coach and uh, staff, we talked and they listened. They said, listen, you're a great fighter at 185, but if you want to tire, can you get him at 185? I said, realistic, I can't. They're like, you need to drop weight then. So I made an educated decision with me and my staff, you know, and, uh, we went we went to 170 so i i got a raw diet i uh, got with my coach he, he was in my butt every day but it worked you know i made 170 and you know i think i'm gonna be a bigger beast uh, a really you know contender in 170 division can we talk about the flare going on in your head right now and on your beard uh, what's this about uh that, that's my um that's that's my work my war cut the war okay. doomsday war cut, cut. Yeah. doomsday cut yeah <laughs> so every fight everybody knows before that before i fight i get the the sickest cut ever I, i'm trying to be the not only the best fighter in the welterweight division but the best haircut or hair design oh yeah there you go right actually that's me right there that's the guy with the arm right yeah that's me and this is like uh, some design that goes into the beard it's, it's crazy. The, the guy, shout out to Platinum Cuts. He did it in Las Vegas, one of the best haircut plays ever, not only in the, in the country, in the world. Um, his name is um, ba, uh, Banana. There it is. And uh, he, it, shout out to him. I'm see him tonight, but he did, he did really good. He took him about an hour, took his time, but this is the best cut I ever had. It's awesome. What are some of the positives that you can take out of a time outside of the UFC? Um, I take a lot of positives. You know, I, I got one of my one of my good trainers, um, Nick Drummond. Um, he helped me a lot. You know, realize what I need to do. He's an upper kind of welterweight. You know, you're gonna see him soon in the UFC. He's my training partner, and um, he he pushed me to do one of the best. You no, know, right now he's seven and zero. He's a, a white cool secret. You know, and he's gonna he's gonna be a beast. He's, he's gonna be a beast. He's been finishing people left and right. I mean, he gives me problems all the time, and you know, to see him come up. And he said, "No, you could do it." I was like, "He said he told me that I was one of his idols, and to see what he does, and he gives me problems. Like, you know what? I, I could do it. And it's, it's teammates like that that make you push and you know go back to the big show and do what I did, what I did tonight." Now that you faced a couple of prospects in the sense that Uriah Hall and Bosire were new to the UFC, where do you see yourself going from here? Is there anybody that you'd want next to go up the tier? Um, right now, I just want to um, take my time. I'll, I'll pull who they fight in front of me. You know, I, I got, I'm i going to be educated to talk with my coach. And my, it's also my coach. I'm, I'm really um, I'm really crazy. My coach crew, John, you know, he, he knows I'm a fighter. I'll fight anybody. I'll fight Buck Lesnar if, if I want allowed to. But um, with him, it's, it's up, up to him. And if he makes the right decision, uh, I'm going to let him be. I, I just fight. I, I just like go in there and fight and fight whoever. Everybody knows that. I don't care you're 85, 170. I'll fight you, you know. And he's going to make the educated, you know, decision who I should fight, you know. And I got, got a lot of work to work, work on. I felt I should finish my opponent. It, I didn't, so it's a loss. I forgot to work on before I be become the uh, that fighter I want to be. But I'm on the way. I'm on the way, way there. And whoever the person in front of me, and if he okays it, I'm a fight. Is there anything in particular from this fight that you feel that you want to improve on or work on? 
Um, my jiu-jitsu. I felt like I, I, was, I should be able to submit him. I mean, I passed him, mounted him, I took his back. But I should be able to finish him with my jiu-jitsu. My jiu-jitsu came a long way in my wrestling, and I should have been more easy to take him down. What it is is I'm a stubborn kickboxer. I'm a stubborn Muay Thai practitioner. And, you know, everybody, he's like, oh, he's a glory fighter. He's a K-1 fighter. He fought some of the best guys in glory. Excuse me. I think he was one of the um, best K-1 fighters. Um, he won the Grand Prix in K-1, which is high level. And I, I stood and banged with one of the K-1 fighters. You know, I was like, no, I want to test the striking. You know, I'm, I'm good for that. But, you know, I think I took him down enough and showed my I'm down well rounded. But I also showed that, you know, I, I can hang with some of the best strikers in the world. You brought in Jorge Rivera for this fight. Uh, talk about your relationship with him and what did he bring to the, the team? Jorge Rivera has been one of my heroes. He was one of the first guys to go to um, UFC from Boston. And for years I idolized him and I wanted him to be in my corner. And when he says like, yes, it was an honor. And we, we actually built a team together. Um, we, we're going to take over Boston and Rhode Island. It, it's going to be our new Columbus team. You know, me and Jorge, it's, it's, it's big time. I mean, he, he, right? Yeah, big time. And um, him being my corner is a big thing. You know, before we had a little separation, but right now he's helping me. And he pushed me real hard. He came to my camp. And he really pushed me, tell me what to do with the experience. And you see the you see the different results. You know, I'm not some crazy kid swinging. I'm real educated now, and with right people in my corner right now, I, I believe I could be the next uh, welterweight champion. Someone said on Twitter that someone passed gas during the fight. Was that you or was that him? Uh, I think it was him. I don't think it was me. <laughs> I don't think it was me. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was him. But uh, yeah, that, that that was a funny moment, <laughs> uh, fight moment. <laughs> There's a doomsday joke in there somewhere. Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> totally, 100. <laughs> percent